Welcome to the Historic Preservation Commission meeting of Thursday, October 16th, 2014. The time is 5 p.m. Can we have roll call, please? Here. Commissioner Morgan? Here. 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 Thank you. Item number two is report regarding posting of the agenda. The agenda for this meeting was posted on or before Monday, October 13, 2014 on the bulletin board outside City Hall. And item number three is approval of the minutes. Any comments or corrections? Looks like we have, um, if I am understanding this right, motion one and motion two um, under the uh, 105 um, Kenneth looks they look to be the same motions am mm -hmm. I reading that correctly instead of an alternative motion to the first one right mm -hmm. is that the they were the same motions they were the same motion we're talking about 105 yeah. Kenneth or you're talking about 1105 Hillcroft oh yeah Hillcroft they, they, they were Hillcroft basically the same this. motion there was there was kind of another motion that didn't go forward so we didn't put that into the minutes oh there were, there were three motions made but only two that got voted on so that's what we put in for the record, okay. but they, they became basically the same motion. <laughs> okay. I think there's a line in here that says after further discussion, the commission revisited the same motion. I had to read that a couple of times too, mm -hmm. but it, yeah. it, it, that is what happened. Okay. Never okay. mind. <laughs> That's okay. Took me a couple of times too. Just for very minor on page three, there's a period missing under letter C motion. It's the very last sentence after the words Peterson House. Oh, yes. And I will put that in between the E and the quotation mark. Okay, thank you. <laughs> and then just a note, not really for the minutes, but I did look in, and house number 50, or historic resource number 50, is Peterson House. Yeah, well, yeah. So we'll have to rename this. We're, we're tr what we're trying, we cannot find anything about that first Peterson. We have no record of a Peterson being associated with the property. Hmm. So we're a little confused right now. We've gone through all our records. We've talked to the property owner. Originally, we were hoping to just distinguish them by different first names. Hopefully, they had different first names or middle initials or whatever. So we're going to figure that out. So we don't want to strip the name away right now because we don't know. Means, so. That's an old one. Mm -hmm. And then just one other one on the first page under four. It's the third bullet point. At the end of that sentence, there's two words, guidelines. Oh, we guidelines the guidelines. That's all I had. Thank you. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. A okay, roll call, please. Yes. 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 Okay, next is number four, oral communications discussion. No, I'm on. Okay. Did you see what they're calling about? You weren't on? It was hers. <laughs> and Mike was off. Oh. <laughs> do we need to do we do roll call again? Yeah, do let's do the roll call, call again. again just to be Let's do it again official. just to have it on the record. Okay. Commissioner Garpetian? Yes. Commissioner Morgan? Yes. Commissioner Shire? Yes. Madam Commissioner Vartanian? Yes. Commissioner Vidor? Yes. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, number four is oral communications. Discussion is limited to items not a part of this agenda. Each speaker is limited to five minutes. The commission may question the speaker, but there will be no debate or decision. And I have one card from Richard Leboff. Good evening, uh, uh, Chairperson Vartanian and other commissioners. I am Dr. Richard Leboff, a 35-year resident of Glendale 
and a 13-year a resident of Northwest Glendale, living in the Brockmont Park Historic District. As I am sure you are aware, a tremendous setback for historic preservation occurred this past Tuesday evening when the three-member council that evening voted two to one to permit the demolition of 1555 Valley View Road. For the record, a few of the facts you need to know that needs to have public disclosure. First, in my opinion, this represented further emasculation of this commission by the city and not upholding your unanimous vote from the meeting on July 17, 2014. By the way, let's make it clear about emasculation. In this case, emasculation doesn't have the usual meaning, uh, but is the Oxford Dictionary uh, definition uh, that makes it a person, idea, or piece of legislation weaker or, le or less effective. In other words, your body here. This is, in other words, further debilitation of the commission's function after what happened recently on Grandview. Second point, not only did they emasculate you, but they also degraded and Mr. Nigerian personally attacked Ms. Fedor for what she had said at the July meeting regarding putting a moratorium on the consideration of new historic districts. One of the staff, in fact, during the council meeting, pulled up something from the files or the internet uh, to prove his point that uh, Ms. Fedor had made comments. Uh, in, in my opinion, that was disgraceful and over the top for him to have done so. Next point. At the meeting on Tuesday, a lot was said about whether CEQA affects this project. It is well beyond my understanding, and both Weaver and Nigerian seem to have gone with the deputy Glendale City attorney view so as not to dispute the attorney for the Yepes or the attorney for the Glendale Historical Society. In my view, they are using a loophole in order to avoid having to consider CEQA. Next point. Weaver, in his remarks, made a point of emphasizing how he had received an email from a planner or someone in Pasadena who stated categorically that CEQA needed to be followed. What upset him and apparently influenced his voting is that another city put in their two cents into the mix. He also mentioned something about being threatened. And from what I now know, and I'm sure you know, he has decided to retract his decision to run and will be running. You can be certain that neither he nor Mr. Dejarian, who talks out of both sides of his mouth, will ever receive my vote again. Paul Devine, our new council person, was the shining star that night. Everything she said was on the side of preservation and was presented in a thoughtful and intelligent manner. Others who spoke and un were unfortunately not listened to thought that there should be a compromise and that the size of the lot of the house could easily be expand of the house could be expanded and, and modified. Mr. Platt himself had worked with them originally on that. The council did not go for that and chose only to add two conditions. For myself, the real crux of the issue was that the planning division of the community development department, especially Mr. Platt, your liaison has known about the problem, confusion, confluence, as Mr. Ochoa has put it, between a remodel or demolition of a contributing home being in the pipeline during the final designation of an historic district for a long time now, and has neither has either himself or been told by other higher-ups to ignore the problem. Uh, although there is a staff report that apparently cannot be released, but it's in works about this very issue. The attitude from what I can observe is that since the historic district had 80%, 88% contributing homes, we could afford to lose one since the required threshold is 60% and this only brings it down to 86%. That is not, in my opinion, acceptable when it comes to significant historic resources, which 1555 Valley View Road is. So, yes. I'm wrapping One more minute. Yes. yes. Thanks. 
Some wish to make this out to be the house to be an ugly eyesore with no redeeming historical qualities. I and I think you would totally disagree. While there are a number of ranch style houses, this is one is different and distinctive because of its size, especially the frontage, which has multiple sets of windows and is probably at least 65 across the front. In conclusion, the city council, in my opinion, has gone against the grain in not supporting your recommendation. Each of you should be very upset with what with that, and some of you may may, in fact, may want to consider resigning because of this. That, of course, would make a statement that is needed. Further, the city will get what I believe they want, more revenue from, uh, the, in the form of property taxes and permit fees. It was mentioned on Tuesday night how the city staff had gone from 2,000 to 1,500 and uh, so forth. Um, when historic districts were created, um, who would have thought that contrary homes would be demolished? And this, you can be sure, will not be the last one to be demolished or changed. There are already plans submitted by the owners of 1605 Valley View, the next door house to 1555, to, to add another garage and office facing Auburn Drive. Months ago, Mr. Platt had told me how wonderful the design was. I gather he will pushing the, be pushing the plans through. Though now that we do not have an official, although now we do have a visual historic district, I believe those plans will have to will have to come before you before going to the design review board. I don't think any of you would want to face three or four garages as I am now going to face. Hopefully, you will deny approval as well. Thank you, Thank you for allowing me to speak. I am more than willing to answer any questions you may have. Thank you for your comments. Okay, okay that being the only card, we'll close the public hearing. And item number five is comments <coughs> from commissioners. Um, yes, I just want to compliment the Glendale Historical Society on a very, very successful tour this year. I think there were something like 700 people, maybe or 600 plus that attended. Um, I was very proud and honored to work on work at one of the homes and uh, it was a delightful an engaged group of people who came through and a very, very well-organized tour. So congratulations to everybody for all their very hard work, particularly the people who organized the tour. Yes, I, I echo Commissioner Bidor's comments. I uh, also attended Kiwana's incredible dock splash slash uh, dock race, which was held last weekend at the Rodrigo Park. It was a great event. Uh, great family event. I also attended uh, the Armenian Korean festival in uh, Crescent Valley High School. That was a very good event too. That these are the <coughs> type of events that brings communities together, and uh, people get to know each other. Neighbors get to know each other. So those are my comments. Great. Thank you. I have some. Please. This is. <coughs> I would like to make a few comments concerning last Tuesday City Council meeting about 1555 Valley View Road. This will not be about the council's decision, right or wrong, that, that has been decided, but th that the allegation that the HPC all had conflict of interest and by definition were biased and prejudiced in their actions as they are all dues-paying members of the Glendale Historical Society. I can only speak for myself. I have not been a dues-paying member of the Glendale Historical Society since being on the HPC. My membership was paid by another as a gift to avoid any such conflict of interest. I am a member, but do not partake in any of the Glendale Historical Society's decisions, nor always agree with those decisions. Just like I'm a member of a political party and do not always condone or agree with some political decisions. I do not believe, to my knowledge, that the Glendale Historical Society was instrumental in the creation of the Brockmont Historic District as alleged. It was my understanding the residents within the Brockmont Historic Preservation Overlay Zone worked to create and shepherd Brockmont through the historic district pro process, not the Glendale Historical Society. Though the Glendale Historical Society may have been publicly and openly opposed to the residents' application, I did not partake in any nor knew of any Glendale Historical Soci Society opposition until informed at the commission meeting. I do take umbrage that belonging to any historic group or society when influence my decisions or actions. I have only sought what I feel is best for Glendale, never being prejudiced for or against any position advocated by the Glendale Historical Society. The opposing legal counsel was just flat wrong. Thank you very much. And then a happier note. <laughs> um, this is from the Historical Society of the Crescent Valley. 
this Monday, October 20th at 7 p.m., they are having a talk on Route 66, the road in romance. There is no road in America quite like Route 66. The highway winds its ways from Chicago to Los Angeles and captures an iconic piece of American history. This program will talk about the history of Route 66 and its influence on our culture. Our speaker will be Ben Fitzsimmons, Senior Manager, Programs and Public Events at Autry at the Autry National Center. And the the meeting is at the La, Crescenta, the La Crescenta Center for Spiritual Living, located at the corner of Dunsmore and Santa Carlotta, October 20th at 7 p.m. Thank you very much. Thank you. If I could just follow up on Commissioner Morgan's comment about the uh, accusation of bias, just for the commissioners to know, which I believe you probably already know, um, the city attorney has looked into this and all the case law and membership in an organization would not indicate any bias on any commissioner board member's part. It's quite common, in fact, for board members to be on various uh, uh, charitable or philanthropic groups. The only uh, conflict would be if you were on the board, currently an active member of the board of an organization, which none, none of the HPC members are. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and I also briefly want to commend the Glendale Historical Society for another very um, well attended and well received home tour with, yes, I think well over 600 attendees. And um, on a neighborhood note, I, I want to um, thank um, some neighbors of mine for taking the initiative to um, take out some vinyl windows which were put in a number of years ago and replaced them with appropriate wood replacements so um, just a little you know thank you for doing that and how refreshing mm. how refreshing <laughs> well there's a first time for everything right <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope that more people will will um, will see that and and take the lead it's great yeah now it's a good thing Okay, item number six is old business, and having none, uh, we'll move on to seven new business, 822 East Wilson Avenue, Glendale Register nomination, and Mills Act application. We'll have the staff report, please. Mm -hmm. Members of the commission, this is the nomination um, application for Glendale Register of Historic Resources and the Mills Act application for 822 Wils East um, Wilson Avenue. This house is located at the southwest corner of Wilson Avenue and Cedar Street. Could you speak up a little bit? Sure. Thank you. The two-story house built in 1902. The design of the house reflects the period between um, the late Victorian architectural style transitioned to the simple <coughs> style. The house featured the most character defining features of the Victorian style and it also has some notable architectural elements of the craftsman style, uh, such as configuration of the gabled roof, uh, the simple porch, and exposed rafter tails. And the house is an excellent example um, of the early residential architecture in Glendale, but it is also a rare example of its style in Glendale. The house has been featured on Glendale Historical Society walking tour in 1981 and also in 2014. The first owner of the house was Harriet Harris. She lived in the house until 1917. And after her, the house had several owners, but information provided in the application and also a brief staff research indicated that no one associated with the house appears to be eligible, uh, I mean, to be significant uh, in, in the history of city, and no significant event associated with the property. That's why the property is not eligible for designation under criteria one and two, but it is eligible for designation under criteria three and five. Uh, the house features steeply pitched gable roof and hipped roof with overhanging boxed eave and exposed rafter tails and decorative corbels and brackets. The roof is clad with oswald shingles. There are three 
um, shed roof dormers and a brick chimney over the roof at the south side um, of the roof, this side. The house also features a notable entry porch at the front facade with square shaped post wood railing and um, denticu uh, denticulate frieze. And the, uh, also there is an original wood door uh, with a single large pane of glass at the entry porch. The walls are clad with horizontal wood siding and um, a three band of horizontal um, sautus shingle. And also at the bottom of the walls, um, there is a fund brick foundation. Windows in the house consist of original over, one over, picture window, casement, and hopper windows. Window surrounds uh, feature wide wood trim and seals, which most of them are original. There are also two aluminum siding windows at the basement at the, the south side of the house. These two windows. The house has a non-original detached garage at the south side of the property. This garage has been built in a simple style in an uncertain date, but the design of this garage matches with the overall appearance of the house. And uh, Sandborn map, 1908 Sandborn map shows that there uh, was a probably a small carriage house or a barn at the southwest side of the lot and um, 1950 Sandburn map shows that uh, there is a development that you can see in this map at the right side. Comparing um, the existing appearance of the house um, to the photograph published in the 1904 brochure entitled Glendale, a place for homes, shows how the house retained most of its architectural integrity. There are only few changes over the time for this house, which are including probably a sleeping porch at the east side of the house, um, based on interior evidence that we see in the house, addition of a deck, at the southeast corner of the property, re roofing um, in 1961 and 2014, and um, the new windows added at the second uh, floor bathroom uh, according to the permit history. Also, the garage has a new aluminum door. Um, Staff in the staff report um, mentioned that the pieces, the curved decorative pieces at the top of the wood railing at the entry porch might, mm, might not be original, but uh, closer, uh, if we have a closer look to this old photo from 1904, we can see that there is uh, some evidence showing that um, this decorative curved pieces at the top of railing uh, seems original from photos in 1904. Staff uh, believes that 822 East Wilson is eligible for designation under Criteria 3 because it is a rare and distinctive example of the transitional period between the Victorian and early craftsmen styling Glendale. In addition, it retains the most of its original features that make it a remarkable example for the property of its age. Staff also believes that 822 East uh, Wilson Avenue is eligible for designation under Criteria 5 because of um, it reflects the city early heritage and it is uh, one of the rare, rare remaining of its style um, in city center, uh, such as the good house and the doctor house. Which isn't there. 
but comparing uh, with what we what we have now in the city center um, none are comparable to the quality and the integrity of this house uh, also staff recommends that the house um, be called Harris house after its first owner if commission support the nomination staff also recommends some Milzak conditions for this house including uh, clean and repaint all exterior woodwork except the stained doors screen to air um, uh, condition unit at the west side of the house paint electric cervix panel and conduit at the south facade with an appropriate paint door color repair brake base at the exterior walls replace uh, the existing chain link fence around the property at the east west and south with the new fence appropriate to the design and the style of the house that was our presentation thank you Eileen mm -hmm. okay so we'll open oh I'm sorry um, we'll open the public hearing and I have one card uh, Robert Koshland good evening I'm Robert Koshland and I along with my wife Jennifer are the owners of the property at 822 East Wilson about a year and a half ago we had no thought of buying a historic property. Um, we were living in Studio City. We'd lived there for nine years. And uh, one evening, we went to visit a friend who lives in West Adams. And when we went to his house that we had not been to before, it was a 1907 craftsman house, huge. It's like 4,600 square feet, three stories. And we were just blown away. We never really thought about history in Los Angeles extending beyond the 40s maybe so when we saw that house and kind of the detail and the woodwork we were really it got us thinking and we thought maybe we should go see if there are other houses out like that and maybe we should sell our place and and, and buy a new place so over the weeks we periodically would look online to see if anything was available and we did poke around the West Adams uh, area to look at houses there but the neighborhood is not quite as um, nice as the Glendale area of course <laughs> which uh, one day um, I looked online and I saw this house for sale and it had been on the market for like two weeks so a couple hours later after seeing it we kind of drove by and took a look at it and thought hmm, it's very impressive so two days later I arranged uh, with the realtor to come look at it I looked around I texted Jennifer and I said we need to buy this house and she texted back can i can i look at it <laughs> so i said sure so uh, that was a after thursday you it. what's that so she can look at it after yes. you purchase it because you liked it so well much. that's yeah. kind of what ended up happening so on saturday this is two two days later she she came we went to look at it again and she was like wow this is really impressive so i said well i'm going to put our house for sale so she said okay so she went to work on monday and sometime during the afternoon on monday I texted her and said, our house is on the market. And she's like, what? And I said, and there's an open house the following Sunday. And that was, that passion, the excitement that we had, basically is how we came to sell our house and purchase the house here at 822 East Wilson in a matter of five weeks from the day we saw it to the day that we walked in the door. In fact, we were still closing loan documents and our stuff was in a moving truck and we hadn't quite closed this house yet uh, all on the same day. And at three o'clock, finally everything went through. I told the movers they didn't have to go to storage. They could actually take it to the house and we got the keys at five o'clock. It was probably one of the most stressful times uh, in uh, my wife's life. Um, I always thought it was exciting, <laughs> but, uh, but no, but it all, it all, came, it all came together. Um, we're collectors. We collect fossils and antiquities, and um, we don't collect those things to put them in boxes. We collect those things to share and with our friends, and we have them on display. And when people come to the house, they get to see those things. And this house is kind of like the ultimate collection, and it's, it's something that's it's bigger than us. It's a part of our shared history, and it's something that we believe should not turn into an apartment complex. We think it's something that should stick around for everyone to see. And it's something that 
that we feel very passionate about, um, you know, since we've moved in in there, uh, as our our art project, as our restoration project, as kind of our our gift to the community too, to to make the house as as beautiful as it can be, and to ensure that it stands another hundred years or, or two hundred years or however long you know the city of Glendale stands, we think this house should be part of it. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, with that, we'll close the public hearing. And comments from the commissioners? Yeah, I can go first because, uh, first of all, I want to thank you for nominating the house and purchasing the house. Uh, what I liked about the house is not just the, out, the exterior is intact, also the interior is intact. I didn't get a chance to go by over the weekend, but I went over there and knocked on their door and uh, Jennifer was kind enough to let me walk through the, the house really quick. But the interior is intact and it's, it's beautiful. They don't make it like they used to anymore. Uh, and what I like about this house the most is the exterior design, that we jo which we don't have too much of it in Glendale, and it's a Victorian house. As I mentioned many times, I lived in Northern California, San Francisco area for 14 years and there were so many, so many examples of them over there, but we don't have that many of them over here. So uh, I'm in support of it uh, wholeheartedly and uh, it's a beautiful house and with the, with the conditions, I'm all for this, for this nomination. Thank you. Why? Go ahead. <coughs> I'd like to say Glendale, 1902. I mean, there are less than 2,000 <coughs> people living in this valley at the time. It was known as the Strawberry Valley. You know, 1902, four years before incorporation. This was a large investment at the time in the Glendale Valley. There were a lot, not very many homes, so this is to have survived as long as it has, intact, in situ. Yeah, it's a, it's a great thing, and I, I admire, admire your passion. It's just, to me, it's... I've looked at the house for years and hoped that it would never become an apartment building, and I feel with you both as owners, it all stayed the way it was. I am all in favor, and we did get to go through part of the inside of the house, and he, he does have fossils on the wall, and it is really a great place to just see. So I'm all for it with whatever conditions they apply. Thank you. Um, yeah, thank you very much. Obviously, this house, you know, last Last month we had an owner uh, joining up with the Casey Stengel house, which is a house that, you know, people pay attention to and who owns it, and it's an important house. And you feel like, you know, it's, there's some, like, cosmic thing that brings a house together with somebody. And in this case, it seems like, um, you know, you were meant to have this house and it was meant to be with you because you have such a strong feeling about it. And I think the fact that it does meet criteria five and is very important uh, to the heritage of our city and it's kind of sad that it's one of maybe a few you can count on one hand that meets criteria five. Um, you know, we're very, very pleased that, uh, you know, people with so much you know, thoughtful care and love for this particular property uh, have bought it. And I feel that um, uh, very relieved in a way because as a South Glendale resident, I'm passing this house all the time and every, it's not just me, many people are always wondering, you know, what's going to happen to the house when it changes hands. And it's a great sense of relief to know that people with your feeling for it uh, have have moved in so thank you very much and for bringing it forward today and I um, agree with the report and the Mills Act provisions there was one thing maybe maybe it's on here I don't know um, there were there little sliders in the basement windows that I, I don't know if those should be ultimately replaced or not but they're very yeah. rudimentary and tiny but you yeah, know. We, we saw them when we left that up to, to the yeah, board so, commission. Yeah, so, you know, I, it's just something to mention, and I would defer to my colleagues on that one, but, you know, I think think you're going to be such great stewards of the house, whatever you do with it. So thank you. Thank you. Well, I, I can concur with all the commissioners. I didn't have a chance to physically tour the inside, but went by it. And, um, yeah, it's a beautiful example of one of our earliest um, heritage homes. So 
Thank you again for your passion for it and for bringing it forward today. Um, I would fully support the motion with the conditions and wanted to just talk about a few others. Um, I think because this is such a rare example of one of our earliest homes, we should preserve it um, you know, to the utmost level. So I think the aluminum windows should be on the, on the work plan to be replaced, um, as well as the garage door. I know that's been a topic on many of our others, and I think there's something that would be much more appropriate to the style and um, of that original, you know, 1900 home. The, the other thing I wanted to the commissioners to talk about is uh, underneath the porch, there is some, you know, prefabricated trellis panels kind of enclosing that. Um, it's in one of the photos if you want to take a look or go back on the screen. The, the rear porch? The, yeah. The, the addition? Would I think the trellis panels definitely right take away from the style of the home? And there's probably a better solution there that would, you know, kind of fade away a little bit more and it wouldn't cause so much attention to it with the pattern. And obviously, you know that those are prefab because you see them on people's fences and yards and things. Mm -hmm. So maybe staff could work with them in an appropriate. You have any you know, that would be my looking recommendation. Looking at it, I can see possibly a, a paneled detail. Yeah. Something like that. I don't yeah. think we'd want to do horizontal siding there. No. no. Okay, so we'll work on something that's appropriate, possibly with paneled. No, but with those changes, I would fully support the nomination. Great. Thank you. And um, I, too, <coughs> excuse me, fully support the nomination. Um, you know, as, as everyone has said, it's, it's one of those special homes in Glendale that there's only a handful of which remain, and it definitely... Um, speaks to criterion number five and the early heritage of our city and we only do have a handful of these left so um, yeah it's I, I'm um, I, I just want to thank the owners for bringing the home forth um, I also want to point out on the topic of windows since almost all of your windows except a handful appear to be original that um, those windows have been in place for about 112 years. Mm -hmm. So windows can last a long time and really don't necessarily need to be um, changed out for more modern synthetic materials. That's my little spiel on windows. Um, and for me, I, I drove by that home for a number of years and probably didn't notice it until one day I was turning the corner and I did. And then you know, I fell in love and realized that, you know, we had something really special there. Um, I know you had mentioned in your work plan that you want to paint. And certainly it's up to you whatever you do with painting, but um, it's very quiet right now. So I'm wondering if you might, you know, be interested in, I don't know if you'll paint it up like a painted lady, but make it a little more visible. Um, and I would agree with the suggestions for um, replacing the basement slider windows, doing something uh, with the garage door. And I don't know if at the garage, I mean, I don't know how our colleagues feel about doing something maybe a little different than the aluminum garage door. And Commissioner yeah, Shire I think we have had that. mentioned yeah. that. Okay, yeah, we'll, good. So we I just wanted to make sure we had consensus with a, a wood on that. door of, well, I'll read back the conditions, which is what oh, okay. we do with DRB, just to make sure you're all on board. Okay, great. And then I know at the tour um, that the owner had mentioned um, replacing the fixture at the front porch entryway. So I'd and that may have already, we've, we've kind of worked on that and found a, a fixture that was appropriate that we could do at staff level. So okay. I think that's already happened or soon. Okay. Do we add that into the conditions? Or? No, because that will be done probably before the Mills Act contract's even signed. So. Okay. Um, that's it for me. So if we have a motion and a second. Why don't, why don't I read back the oh, conditions? Right. Okay. So Sorry. Yeah. Can, I, can um, I ask one quick thing? Sure. I have to remind the commission that uh, the garage door, when this house was built, there were no cars in Glendale. So whatever is appropriate is actually 
after the fact. Although when this garage was built, there were probably. Yes, so. that's true. Yes, but it originally <laughs> was it was a carriage house. So it, one but of my one thing, of my no. pet peeves is when people want to put carriage house looking doors on automobile garages. <laughs> so, but we'll definitely come up with something appropriate. We don't we don't know anything about this little garage except it's, it's not early, but we don't know when it was put in. So, pick a horse in it. Yeah. So, so we'll yeah, be one of those carriage, plastic you horses. You should be riding horses. That's right. <laughs> so, Jay, what happens in that case if it wasn't permitted? Do they? Is it we, we accept it as a non-conforming. Okay. Well, I don't even. I can't even say it's non-conforming. It probably is because it's only a one-car garage, if I'm not mistaken. Um, we would accept it as it is, and it would. Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> it, it looks like it's old. It looks right. like it's been there for a long time. So. Uh, conditions that we have are to clean and repaint all of the exterior woodwork, right. except for the doors that are stained. Um, the two air conditioning units are to be screened at the west side of the house. This may also be accomplished by the fence, so it may not require additional screening. Um, uh, paint out the electric service panel and conduit in appropriate colors, possibly, depending on the selection of their color palette. Uh, repair the brick foundation walls as needed. Replace the existing chain link fence at the east, west, and south with a new fence of appropriate design. If the commissioners have any thoughts on that, we'd appreciate it. It would most certainly be a wood fence of some sort, and we would try to keep the design as simple as possible, but still. Yeah. So it won't take away from the house. Yeah, right. so, so we can work with the uh, owners on that. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll replace, I think it was two aluminum windows at the basement uh, with wood windows. Um, given the configuration in the basement uh, to achieve ventilation, normally we'd uh, look for an awning window at that location so that they could keep things pushed up against the wall. So it would probably be a, just simple awning windows hinged at the top. Um, we'll replace the garage door with a wood door of appropriate design. And the trellis panels under the rear porch will be removed and replaced with new infill with a design that's also appropriate to the house. Also, there are some, some surface-mounted cables and wires on the front of the house. Oh. I think there are cables for, for TV cable. Uh, it's, it's visible. They're all black. I don't know if they can paint them or, or maybe... Yeah, hopefully when, during the ball. paint campaign, those could either be painted out or removed if they're just kind of leftovers. So we'll add a condition to paint out or remove it's cable wires, you think? Or? Yeah. So those are the eight, I'm sorry, the nine conditions that may turn into eight depending on the screening of the units. Yeah, I think if the, if, if a new fence goes in where the chain link fence is now, it probably will screen yeah, the units. Yeah, I assume it will. I don't know. Per personally, I sometimes feel like when you put something around those units, it kind of draws more attention to. Yeah, we're, we're actually even the, thinking think landscaping. We've talked about that, yeah. yeah. Landscaping will help. Mm -hmm. Those are the conditions. I'll, I'll make a motion. Okay. I move that we recommend to City Council that the property located at 822 East Wilson Avenue be designated as a historic resource in the Glenda Register of Historic Resources and that the property would be called Harris House and that the Mills Act condition also be granted to the property with the following conditions that were stated. We second. Okay, great. All right, roll call. Commissioner Morgan? Yes. Commissioner Vidor? Yes. Commissioner Shire? Yes. Commissioner Garpedian? Yes. Chair Bartonian? Yes. 5-0. Cool. Congratulations. Thank you. Next step, City Council. Hi. Uh, with that, we'll move on to item number eight, which is planning division updates and informational briefings. 8A is pending discussion of staff level design review process. And we're very aware that the commission is interested in how permitting the permitting process works when people come to the counter and we're dealing with either Glendale Register properties or historic district properties. Um, Chris Agardi and I are going to be working on that report, and it's just a matter of staff time. We think we're going to be able to have it ready for you for the November hearing, um, and we're shooting for that right now. So, so we haven't forgotten about it. Thank you. 
And then 8B is HPC meeting schedule for November and December. And this was just checking in with the commission members in, in the past because of the holiday conflicts with uh, commission meetings. We've often combined November and December into one hearing. This year, we, unless you tell us otherwise, it doesn't look like we necessarily need to do that because the commission meetings are the week before the holiday weeks. If I'm not mistaken, for thanks, I think for Thanksgiving also. So unless any of you have travel plans, my recommendation is that we stay with the schedule and then if we don't have anything in December, we can just cancel that meeting. When is the November meeting? November 20. I'll be gone. I'll be gone. Anyone else? Right, right now we don't have, well, except for our report, so, which you might want to hear. I certainly yeah. would like to yeah. hear it. Yeah. <laughs> I can if if we don't have if we don't have any other tape. if we don't have any other <laughs> sure but you might want to participate. Uh, yeah. We we could just recognizing how how interested the commission's been in the subject. If that's the only thing on the agenda for November, then we could cancel November and meet in December. So. What's the December date? December eighteenth. Okay, fine. That's good. Okay, so we'll stick Better. with the schedule. That'll give you more time. Exactly. <laughs> okay, <laughs> to prepare it the day before it's due. <laughs> yeah. I, I had a quick question. Do you have any sense of any other nominations that might be, you know, coming down mm, the pike? No. Yeah, we don't. We don't have any on our desks. Um, haven't heard anything. But lately, we've been getting lots of surprise nominations. So. Okay. And I only ask because, if I recall, I think last December we had a, a pretty busy um, schedule. And we wanted to be careful this year because it's the holiday season and everybody's, it was difficult oh, for most of us to visit, yes. to visit oh, okay. the homes. So yes, I'm just going to mention a, it in case, you know. Yeah, this year we're burdening I've, council. We're bringing all of this year's Mills Act contracts and designations to council on one evening. So but that that's that part of their regular job. Um, we haven't f confirmed it yet. It, I'm shooting for November 18th. Is that, yeah, I think it's November 18th. Okay. If not then, it would be December 9th, maybe. There's a lot of dark dates for council in uh, two holiday months. Okay, sounds good. I think that's it for me. We are adjourned. <laughs>